Let's go. All right, how Canadian is this? Welcome to Shovel Cam. Oh yeah, and episode 39. Well, it's episode 39, folks, and it's still terrible out, right? <laughs> Shovel cam, that was a lot of fun. Anyway, we're, uh, we're still struggling to get this. Uh, this is part four, unbelievably part four, of how to get racing pedals installed in your project car. So I'm going to be working away. I'm, uh, I'm not wrapping this episode until it's done. I think there's only a little bit left. So uh, the, the weekend is now on us. We've got the furnace has been chugging away all morning and it's now 13 degrees Celsius in the shop. That's at my head, so my feet are still freezing. Uh, but we'll survive. Don't worry about me. It's a, it's a tough Canadian thing. It's not a problem. Anyway, the clips are on the panel. All I'm going to do, I think, is get that welded in. Uh, I've got to clean the paint. I've got to get everything prepped and ready to go, as you well know. Uh, to get those in. There'll be lots of bits of fiddling around with it. Of course, nothing is ever going to go in nicely. And then we're going to turn around. We're going to get the dead pedal done. Uh, so this is a key element. I mean, if anyone's ever, if you've ever pushed your car or you ever driven a standard car without a dead pedal, uh, and then you go to drive one with one, boy, you sure wish you had a dead pedal and one without, especially if you're going to go around the corner with any degree of vigor. That's how you hold yourself up, right? Is cranking on that dead pedal. So I got to get one of those built and it'll have, uh, it'll have dimples and stuff. I think it's going to be pretty fancy. So I'm looking forward to getting that done. And then anything else that happens in this episode is just a bonus. So I'm not even going to preface it. I have no idea. I've got, uh, I've got a couple of days uh, to get some work done. Let's see what we can get done. All right, let's get to work. All right, so with the clips on the panel, it's time for the first couple of test fits just to get them into, <laughs> into the car. Some of them were a little bit long, so I had to trim them back. Anyway, so um, the first of so many ins and outs with this particular job. Again, this was, uh, I've shortened this up dramatically. The number of times these panels went in and out is, uh, is just about ridiculous to me looking at it now. Uh, trying it out for square, it ended up just about perfect. Like I really had no complaints there. It, just get a couple of spots on it first and then a matter of just uh, making sure the panel's fully uh, bolted down prior to welding it in. So try to get it all, I mean, we're just trying to suck those sheet metal parts up as tight as we can and then, you know, the errors are going to start manifesting themselves. So there's a first one and get that chasing tool and tap those th flanges down, make sure they're in there really well. And I tack that central rib down. And then you start in with that chasing tool on the back sides of things and get it all welded in. Just in and out, in and out, in and out. And I want those screws to fit really nicely in the holes, right? I, you don't want to be fighting this stuff later. You'll just hate yourself. You know, sure it'll go, but you know, why not make it nice? Barbecue lid, I gave it a try. I couldn't see anything. It's amazing, you know, you, you think with the amount of light that I have in this car right now to, to film in here, that I still need that flashlight because my big head gets in the way and I can't see what I'm doing. So <laughs> to get the flashlight out and everything propped up just so I can see uh, see very accurately when I'm trying to put in those spot welds. Uh, and for uh, older guys out there, I've got a, I think it's a two. Uh, could even be a two and a half cheater in my welding helmet. And if you don't have a cheater in your welding helmet and you uh, spend a lot of time you know, looking through the top of your glasses or whatever, go get yourself a cheater. It's just like, I never knew how great it was until I bought one about a year ago. Fantastic. I can see like I was 20 years old again. It's great. So, anyway, that's uh, a whole lot of fun getting this thing bashed in. All right, a little bit more of those MIG spot welds. Bottom plate, finally done. You know, now I figure out, oh, holes aren't in the right location, things moved, so out it comes again. <laughs> That's just a pedestal on the bottom, it just wasn't exactly in the right place. Oh well, live and learn. I don't know if there's any better way to do this. If anyone's got any bright ideas, I'd, 
I'll be all over it. Shoot me a comment in the comment section. That'd be great. Oh, I'm also going to be releasing some uh, some shirts and other merch on Teespring coming up. So just uh, pay attention. It'll probably be in episode 40 before I get everything finalized. So if you uh, if you'd like to support the channel, I sure would appreciate the support. All right, toe panel going in again. Got to get the fitment nice, so it's going to go in and out and in and out about 50 times. All right, happy enough there. Start welding it in. Of course, using that flat bottom drill to get rid of the paint out from underneath where that spot goes, just so those welds are going in really nicely. Okay, so then the, that panel there in the back to support the toe plate was just clipped in from behind. That's why the pedal uh, cluster is out of the way, so I can easily get access to that. All right, that's pretty much everything welded in on that side. Now you gotta figure out, you know, now we have to fit the panel. So why doesn't it fit? Well, I'll make the holes a little bigger. Well, which holes have to be bigger? I actually use the punch pretty much most of the time. There's no point in trying to drill these holes out. It just doesn't work very well. Uh, and you could do it with a um, uh, with a Dremel tool or a, a die grinder uh, if you like. But I didn't. I didn't want to do that. Oh, and then those clips on the side when I put them in, they just pulled ever so slightly, like half a millimeter. Uh, so I had to actually tug the tunnel out. Like, good thing that foot pedal uh, area isn't welded in. All right, with that, pretty happy with the way it's all fitting. All right, we got it done. I can't believe it. We actually made it all the way through yesterday. I pushed uh, late into the evening to finish it all up. They, uh, all the hard bits were mostly just fitting that panel in, right? So that panel, again, probably went back in and out of the car, I don't know, 50 times, something like that. In order to get all the holes right, they were driving me a bit crazy. So the idea was to get all the bracketry and all of the uh, fasteners and everything put onto the panel and then have that panel make sure that everything, as I put it into the car, was going to remain straight, right? So I could uh, knock the, the, uh, the little tabs out and things like that and then get them welded in. Uh, with the hope that at the end of the day we were going to have that all of those holes are basically blind like I can't move them around I have no way of spotting them after they're in so I was really that was the best way I could figure out how to do it attach them to the panel put the panel in uh, get it fitted up properly and then get it welded up so it started actually with that center rib piece not actually being aligned quite right so it was a little bit twisted uh, and then as I started welding it in, and I knew this was going to happen, right? So as I started welding it in, you start taking away all the little twists, right? As you're flattening the sheet metal down to the, to the car floor and you're welding all the pieces in, you start to lose just the little bits that you need. So again, those fasteners were drilled with basically what's called a tight clearance hole. So the fastener will just go through the hole uh, and then uh, into, the, into, the, into, the, into the nut, right? That receives the bolt. So I had the opportunity to open those holes up. Now I needed to open the holes up clearly uh, to get it all to fit once it was all in because everything wiggled around just a little bit and that's always going to cause things to be uh, a little bit of a pain. So it did take quite a long time to do but I didn't have any other way of doing it. So it's all in now so let's go and uh, let's go and have a look so at least you can see it with the good camera instead of just the it doesn't really look any different than it looked before, right? Like it's just it's just in, except for there's a fastener everywhere. And it wouldn't matter what you did to it, it won't come out of there. In fact, you can't even make it move. Uh, so anyway, it's all tightened in. You can see the welds here along the edge. We fitted it all up. So it's done, 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 done. All those holes fit nicely. The screws, again, I'm really fussy. I want the screws to go in. I don't want them hitting or touching the panel. Uh, they're not supposed to do that, right? And aluminum panels and that kind of thing just end up with wear marks. You'll just rub right through the aluminum, so we don't want that. Okay, so with that all fitted up, we have one last piece to do. Anyway, and what I have to get done today is I'm going to get the dead pedal built. Uh, win, lose, or draw. I'm not going to say I'm not going to leave the garage if the dead pedal's not built, because to be honest, I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to actually build the dead pedal just yet. I've got a rough idea in my head. I've built I built them before, this isn't the first time. So I'd just like to see how that's going to work out for me today. So we'll get the furnace fired up and we'll, uh, 
Actually, it's not too bad today. Minus 15 uh, this morning. So um, even my dogs were able to be outside for more than a minute or two. But I can feel the cold now, so I better get the uh, I better get the furnace cranked up so that I don't turn into an icicle. All right, let's get to work. I've got the seat back in the car. I've tested uh, the pedal position. I mean, I don't actually need the pedals in there because the pedals are going to be coming in and out, out uh, too many times, and it'll drive me crazy. But uh, so anyway, that pattern will be fine. I'm just going to cut a section of it, <clears throat> and then we'll be using the same uh, two mil aluminum sheet because. Uh, I got lots left, so this should be able to make the pedal that I need, and uh, we're gonna actually get this done. <laughs> Unbelievable, but true. All right, uh, without any further for me, I, I don't know how the design is, is gonna manifest itself. I know I wanted to have some dimples. Uh, I'm going to use the the top and the mount, uh, top and bottom mount positions of the current toe plate. I'll have to put one mount, I think, over on the. Um, the bulkhead closing panel and then I put that long support brace in underneath that that foot panel it's four inches wide I've only got one fastener in it and I did that for a reason which is I I knew that I've got it it's almost out near the edge near the pedal so I should have the ability to just poke a hole through those and then I'll just thread I'll just thread into that so I, I used a 1 8 spacer there so there's lots of material there and I think with the uh, it'll be two fasteners on the top and the bottom and one on either side, I think that's going to be more than enough to have this pedal uh, nicely secured into the car. So, um, anyways, I'm going to get to work, get this thing hammered out. Might actually get it done. Like, that's just, it's almost alarming to me that something went well. <laughs> anyway, we'll take it. On we go. I sure am glad I didn't throw out that pattern. I was able to pretty effectively reuse it uh, to create the basis for this, uh, this dead pedal arrangement here. So, just a few trims, just trying to get an idea on the right size, uh, how far out it had to be. So I'm gonna jump in the car and pop in a, that was like a two inch riser, which is about right, I think. Yeah, so I'm happy enough with it there. And with that, we make some final uh, tape adjustments to that pattern, and then I have to get that filler piece made in for the side, right? That filler piece is going to come in there, so I've already fitted that into the car. Uh, there's no great technique for that. You just draw lines until it fits right. Tape it up, test fit it. I have a template that I made uh, with some holes uh, and my dimple die setup, again, which is an old bolt and a, in that case, a 32 millimeter socket worked. Uh, just to get an idea of the scale of the hole, here we are chopping that pound load. This dead pedal still took an entire day to fabricate, a whole, a whole day. And uh, that's a lot of stop motion. I decided I'd go with four holes, just a single roll of four holes. I wanted to get the, you know, get it all deburred nice. I figured it's easier to do when it's flat. Out comes the brake. Just for these little folds, it was totally ridiculous. I wish I had this brake somewhere where I could just leave it. I don't have enough room. Anyway, so I had to make a quick set of uh, dies just out of some channel that I had. Actually, those are from the frame jig uh, from way back. Um, that and the soft mallet makes a pretty effective, uh, pretty effective brake. I don't want dents in this panel, so you have to be real quite careful. I just use my little chasing tool to knock that flange over. And then it gets a little bit of gorilla adjustment here, so I just kind of lean on it and it gets out of my way fast. All right, punch the dimples. I'm just estimating where the centers of the holes are. Like, they're actually really close to being in the right place, just with a little finger wiggle center finder <laughs> trick. Uh, I also did those twice, so I, I punched those holes twice. Um, yeah, just to clean up the hole, so I just punched them twice to clean up the hole.
So after another solid weekend worth of work, we've got the dead pedal in and all the panels are in. There's still just a little bit of finish work to do, uh, but I can cover that off during the week. Just trimming some of these edges, deburring some of the holes, making sure that's all nice, but I think you can get the idea. I don't care what you do to this, it's not going anywhere. So I've added a uh, sort of a bolt in on the side over here, just into a clip, and then I've attached it to the bulkhead on the side with another panel clip there. So with uh, six fasteners total, it's in and not going anywhere. All right, and I'm not peeling the white. Once the white cover comes off, of course, it'll get scratched pretty easily. So I don't want to, uh, I don't want to screw that up right now. So I'm pretty pleased with that. And we're gonna start moving on. Okay, so with the interior mostly stitched up, it's time to move along. Just uh, have to fight with the furnace here. It's uh, yesterday it wasn't too bad. Today it's pretty bad. It, uh, we woke up this morning to minus 30, so the garage is pretty cool. Anyway, uh, motor mounts, so I, I've only just ever tacked these up. Um, there's no reason why they can't be finished welded, so I've got two of them uh, to do, obviously. So we'll get the two motor mounts uh, done up. So we'll get these TIG welded in nicely. It's a, it's a reasonable thing to do on a crappy day when it's really, really cold. Uh, is to sit on your backside, try not to freeze to death. Uh, anyway, so we'll get these, we'll get these welded up because they're ready to go. They've been cleaned and everything else is good. Uh, good on those. Um, anyway, so let's just get that done and then we'll probably wrap the episode there. All right, so as we get ready to TIG, just just remember, uh, always get yourself into a really comfortable position. Just so you're, you're not fighting anything, you're not bent over stuff. We can all do that, but boy, if you're bench welding, you don't have to. Uh, out comes the drill for the little hole so we don't blow out on the end. Uh, as soon as you go and weld around, I've got a, a weld fixture that'll help me do this in the future. I was kind of waiting for that, but it was missing parts, so I wasn't able to put it together very quickly. Um, and I'm cooling quite a bit, so I'm using that airline to cool those welds down. I want to, uh, I don't want to overcook the part. I don't want to get it too hot. <laughs> uh, there we are done. And the furnace just turned off, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, of course, whenever I'm zoomed in like this, uh, I would like to be where the camera is, and the camera's in my way, so it's hard to show you that weld. But again, if you're doing any kind of tube welding, especially uh, TIG, almost exclusively TIG, uh, drill a hole in the end of the tube just to allow the hot air to escape as you're welding. You can then close the hole up uh, very easily, but if not, the last dab, the last dab of your TIG is all always going to blow out on you. Um, let's see if I can get the focus to work. So you can see there the nice sort of rainbow colors on steel just means I have it at the right temperature. Right, so we're not too hot. Um, a little bit up by the bushing end here was a little hotter. So you can see I'm not getting the same rainbow but You'll also see that I haven't wire brushed this or anything, right? This is just pure. This is the way it is. Um, and I'm still, I still have the right color. Like that's still the right color. If it starts looking dark, uh, then you've overcooked things, all right? You've just hit it too hot um, and you've gone too slowly. Uh, it's not like aluminum where you need to be in and out of there super fast, but um, you still have to get your dabs in and get out. Okay, so now we're going to move, as I still have some time left. Uh, surprising but true. I still have a little bit of time, an hour or two left today out here in the garage. So I'm now going to shift gears and grab that oil pan. I mean the TIG set up, I'm, I'm on it today. So um, at least I'll get the outer box part welded up. I still have to fabricate the driver's side but the passenger side is finished. So at least I can weld that box up and the end cap put on it and uh, then maybe think about it a little bit more. All right, let's get back to work. All right, there you can see how much um, I've given it a real generous uh, chamfer. Now I'm trying to get it straight when I bent that part originally. It just got away from me a little bit, so I bent it up straight. Uh, that's 1 8 filler wire, 140 amps, and 
I think the AC, the AC balance is set at 70% on my machine uh, and I'm set at 100 Hertz. So that's the settings that I'm using for this. So, and 1 8 filler wire. Don't mess around with these things. You're, um, if your TIG looks, if your TIG on aluminum looks a little buttery, it's usually because you, you're not hitting enough filler fast enough. You're, it's too hot. So you use the filler wire to chill the to chill the weld puddle. There's the nugget. I'm super happy with that. So you can see you welded all the way through. Um, anyways, lots of fitting and finishing. And then I just use, actually I use a little bit of Windex to clean it. Uh, acetone, whatever you like, but Windex is also fine. Like, doesn't have to be fancy chemicals to make this work. Just tack up the corners. My little third hand tool helping out there. And then just flood it in. You're gonna really, really move when you're TIG welding aluminum. Okay, that's a wrap, folks. We're gonna close it off there. Um, it's still hot off the TIG, but uh, that's just gonna be the end, uh, the new end cap for the uh, for the oil pan. So I've still got a lot of work to do on the oil pan. So that's probably gonna be the next episode, which I think is 40. Um, but I just wanted to show. <laughs> All right. Remember to focus. Anyway, it looks great. Perfectly happy with that. That's that's right off the TIG. I haven't messed up or messed around with that at all. Um, there's the furnace. I just knew it was going to happen. But totally happy. Remember, if you're doing this stuff at home, uh, watch your craters, watch your starts and stops. Uh, so feather it off near the end. Aluminum also, you really have to move. like. You know, you're going to pick up and go. It's so much faster than steel. Uh, it's, you know, the puddle is melting the rod, not the torch. There's all kinds of stuff I could teach you about that to make your, to make your welding that little bit better. But uh, also completely happy with the finished engine mounts. So nice rainbows all the way around, mild steel. It's like a good day for welding for me or something, right? So uh, always glad to have those days. Anyway, thank you very much for uh, coming along for the ride. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. I appreciate it. Like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Uh, we're doing fun things here at Throttle Stop Garage. And uh, anyways, we're going to catch you on the next one.